Okay, hold on to your horses, folks, because these reviews are going to start coming thick and fast. So, another review for a character from Star Wars Last Jedi, this time General Hux, who... Uh, the first thing immediately that became clear to me in this film is how gaunt he looks. He looks as if he has suffered a trauma. Now, I don't know whether he had read the script, and that's why he looks that way, um, but he looks like he's had five years um, in some sort of a prison camp. Uh, you know, he, he's very pale, his cheeks are very kind of thin and pronounced. Um, he doesn't look as prim as in The Force Awakens. Uh, and I think this character typified, uh, typifies exactly what Ryan Johnson has done to J.J. Abrahams' characters from The Force Awakens. He has taken several characters and gone, screw you, J.J., the way you made these characters, I'm going to change it. Um, and they're going to be different characters. You know, you may as well just give them new names and new looks because they are completely different to who they were in the previous films. Now, yes, we didn't see a lot of hooks in The Force Awakens, but what we did see is that he is a very stern and determined commander who has, uh, you know, bass in his voice. He's got a very high sense of authority and he demands respect. Doesn't get on well with Kylo Ren at all. Um, he sees him. He sees himself as superior to Kylo, I think. Uh, because he has ascended through the ranks and you know obviously his family is embedded in the first order history you know his father was in charge of recruitment was very high up in the first order kylo's come in as a force user on the outside and it's kind of very similar to darth vader as just a side um he doesn't have any formal place in the rank of the military and i think hux doesn't really respect him for that in this film hux becomes comedy relief um the very first scene in the film is him on the bridge of the Star Destroyer and immediately being made fun of by Poe Dameron. Now, we saw some of the first scenes of The Force Awakens was Poe making fun of Kylo. So you can't necessarily say it's out of character for Poe. However, for Hux, you would think as someone who is as level-headed and sensible as he is, as has been portrayed... He wouldn't put up with it, you know, the moments that he, I mean, the fact he even accepts the call from Poe, you know, the transmission, doesn't really make too much sense because, again, it's an obvious delaying tactic. Um, why he just doesn't blow the Starfighter out into, a, you know, oblivion as soon as it shows up doesn't make sense to me. Um, you're supposed to be a smart commander in charge of the entire military of the First Order. And at the end of the day, he ends up being made a joke of, um, and not just by Poe. You know, in that in that first scene, it goes on way too long. The comedy is more akin to a Marvel film than a Star Wars film. Um, Evan Kershner, the director of Empire Strikes Back, sums it up brilliantly when he was describing about his thought process going into Empire. He said, I needed humour, but I couldn't have gags. Because Star Wars is not about gags. You can have humour in Star Wars... But you can't have slapstick, you can't have gags, you can't have any of that, you know? And unfortunately, that's the way that the new trilogy has gone. Um, and that's the way that this opening scene has gone. And that's the way that Hux's character has gone. Right the way through the film, we see him being made fun of, whether it's Poe, Snoke, um, you know, ultimately Kylo. Um, he becomes a quivering coward in front of Kylo. Um, you know, which... Kylo force chokes him. That's fair enough. You wouldn't. You would expect someone who's being force choked to give up pretty much immediately. Um, but his character here really just says to me that he is not the same person from the Force Awakens. And considering the fact that th these two movies are supposed to follow up back to back, that shouldn't happen. If by all means, if there's a couple of years between these films, I can accept characters changing because they may go through traumas, they may have experiences during that time that change them fundamentally. But Hooks, ultimately, he has one brief experience with Snoke on the bridge of the Star Destroyer where he gets tossed around. Um, which, yes, would unsettle him, but ultimately I don't think it would waver who he is as a character. By that point, he is already um, looking gaunt. And some people can say, well, the loss of Starkiller base must have really had an effect on him. Possibly, but it doesn't change who you are as a person. Um, you know, especially not with him believing that he's got the resistance in his sights he's ready to blow them up and achieve victory for the first order because that's all he wants again another mishandled character who i think ryan johnson looked at and goes no need for him to be here so we're making comedy relief we'll give him the purpose of comedy 
Um, we see him get tossed around. We see him get blown off. You know, we see him just get... He's considered in this insignificant. And it's a shame because... Can you imagine if they did that to someone like Tarkin? Or Piet? Or Moff to Jared? Um, or even going deeper, someone like... Cody, someone like Rex, you know, all these secondary characters who are have positions of command. Um, but when they're done right, they're treated with respect. They're treated as characters who are respectable and are written so. But in this, it seems like anyone who is not a main character and is on the bad guy side can just be a bit of a joke. Because the bad guys need to be seen as a joke for some reason they don't need to be seen as a as a threat you know it's as though they looked at the original trilogy and gone oh well stormtroopers were a little bit of a joke because they couldn't really shoot and they got beat by ewoks let's extend that to the entire bad guy scene outside of the main character really kylo i'd say kylo the praetorian guards and to an extent snoke were not you know everyone outside of that was just treated like crap on the bad guy side um, so yeah, Hooks didn't enjoy this version of him very much like the original, like the, the Force Awakens version, even though we didn't get to see too much when we thought, yeah, okay, we've got a guy here who is a bit young, he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder, um, he's a direct competitor to Kylo he's very stern, he's very authoritarian and that could be pro that could prove interesting in the future for the struggle for power between him and Kylo you know, um it, it grounds Kylo a different way, you know, rather than having all this focus on Kylo and Snoke and Kylo and Rey, he's also got this side character who is also trying to chip away at him from the reality point of view, you know, from like from a ground level, from the command point of, of the First Order so yeah, again, another character I think Rian Johnson just didn't care for um, who probably wouldn't, he wouldn't have introduced if he had been writing the first film and um, yeah, just a bit of a waste of potential again